Hi, my name is Jan Backman and I'm an expert in packet core mobility architecture. In my daily work, I work with end-to-end -end characteristics, for instance, edge computing and quality of service. In this video today, we're going to explore quality of service and why applications need quality of service in the mobile networks. What are the needs of the applications and what kind of characteristics is it that will drive this? What if it was possible for an application to decide the quality of service need on a per flow basis? What if it was possible for an application to require the quality of service on demand when needed? What if it was possible for an application to always have a good application experience, for instance, when running a Teams meeting or playing a game? Quality of service has always, since the start, been an essential part of mobile broadband. But the only success that we have had so far is the Volta service. And this is because this is an integrated end-to-end -end solution. Mobile broadband is great, but it's not working well for all use cases. Mobile broadband is quite different from fiber. It is not giving a fixed latency. It's not giving a fixed bit rate. And mobile broadband is optimized for radio efficiency as the radio is the bottleneck in the system. The best thing with mobile broadband, however, is that you can bring it with you. In this video, we're going to dig into the quality of service details. One important aspect is the data size, and another one is the reception of the data. If we look at the size, it may be adaptive, like the resolution in a video, or it may be fixed, like an operating system upgrade. If we look at the delivery, it might be immediate, like the voice transfer when you have a voice call, or it may be buffered like the next or upcoming songs in your Spotify list. The combinations of these creates four performance classes that defines four different types of characteristics. And if we add a bitrate and a delay to these characteristics, we have defined a performance level. The first of these performance classes is the adaptive buffered. This is what realizes the mobile broadband of today, and it gives a high latency and a high bandwidth, but it is there to optimize for buffered video that is dominating the networks of today. The second performance class is the fixed immediate. This is quite similar to fiber access and is used for interactive services with a fixed bitrate. The third performance class is the adaptive immediate one, which is optimized for variable bitrate video, and this is where we need to support uh, L4S functionality as well. The final and last performance class is the fixed buffered one. This is where we fit in file transfers of operating systems or whatever it may be that you want to transfer. To support quality of service in the smartphones, we need to have a mapping to the performance classes in the operating systems. In Android, we have three traffic categories that are mapping well to three out of four performance classes. iOS is a bit more complex, and it also has application categories added into the mix. Let us make an example with a first-person shooter game, an action game. It may contain streamed audio and video. You have the action and the moves that are made by the players. You may have replays of audio and video from the previous level. And you do a login to the game server. You have the scoreboards, etc. And there you have actually a solution that maps to all of the performance classes. If we then map this to a subscription, let's say that we have a best effort subscription. That one is then adaptive buffered. It can have a bitrate of 10 or more megabits per second, maybe an availability of 95% of the time. If you also add an adaptive immediate part to this subscription, it may have 2 megabits of bitrate, 50 milliseconds of latency, and an availability of 98%. But if you need to have more performance, 
you may use this via network APIs on top of the subscription. However, with an enterprise or IoT use case, you may actually include this also in the subscription. Why is this then? Well, fixed bit rates are costly to guarantee or, well, at least almost guarantee. And this will drive that we need to do this via APIs from the network side. Today, all of the traffic is running on the mobile broadband service, the adaptive buffer uh, performance class. With this service, if we imagine a game that is running on top of it, it might work 80% of the time quite okay. But if we would just add the adaptive immediate performance class as well, perhaps we could reach even 95% of the time a good performance. And if we would add also the fixed immediate and the fixed buffered performance classes, maybe we could reach even up to 98 or 99% of the time. To get all of this to work, we need to dimension the network for it. We need to understand the applications or the use cases that we're addressing. We need to have the subscriptions in place and maybe also network API support. The application developer needs to think about whether they should have support for all performance classes, or maybe only some of them, or maybe only one. Should they have a dynamic subscription, or should they have a dynamic API controlling the quality service? And the functionality that is missing, how should that be mapped to the other performance classes? As a user, I need to think about what kind of subscription I should buy. Should it be a basic one? the mobile broadband one again, or maybe I should have a premium subscription optimized for gaming. Should this subscription then be a temporary upgrade only, or would I like to have it available at all times? Or maybe I would buy an upgraded quality of service via the application that controls this via network APIs instead. As you see, there are several parties that need to interact to get the quality of service, and there are multiple decision points that need to cooperate as well. Can we achieve all of this in a mobile network? Yes, with 5G SA, Ericsson supports network APIs, differentiated subscriptions, and all the tools in quality of service, including L4S. If there are three things about quality of service that you remember from this video, I want you to remember these. Number one, it is the application that needs to characterize its flows and the needs they have. And they need to bind that to the quality of service APIs in the operating system. Number two, applications need to have support for quality of service either in subscriptions or they need to use network APIs to get the support from the network. Number three, Quality of service only works when it has end-to-end -end support. It needs to work all the way from the application via the UI, the radio, the transport network, packet core, all the way to the application server. Application ecosystems are end-to-end -end and they need to include quality of service.